Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Kim and in today's video we are going to learn about the relative case. In this video we are going to cover up 11 different topics. First we are going to start with a short introduction by answering the question what is the relative? Then we are going to learn when and how to use different illative endings, followed by chapter 5 where we will also see how to form the illative with foreign words. Then in chapter 6 we are going to form some illative sentences with different endings. In chapter 7 we will take a quick look on how the illative case is used in time expressions. Followed by chapter 8, where we will get to know some more situations in which the relative case is required. In chapter 9, we will discuss verb reactions. Followed by chapter 10, where we will also learn about some specific words or phrases in the relative case. So here we are going to learn some phrases like come in or I'm going home. And at the very end of this video, we are going to practice what we've learned today. So let's go. So we start with the first question. What is the illative? The illative is one of the inner local cases and answers the questions Michin, Minna and Genan. In the English language, the illative is expressed as a movement to or into something. This case is often used in combinations with verbs that express movements such as Männer or Lechter or Aya. For example, Männen Kyriaston. So here we answered the question, where do I go? I'm going into the library. Menen Kyriaston. Regarding the consonant gradation, the illative does always stand in the strong grade. Then the illative can also have different endings. Which ending we have to add depends on the ending of a stem of a word, which we're gonna learn more about in this video, plus also when to use the illative case. So let's see how to form the illative. So one of the possible illative endings is the vowel N ending. Here it's standing as VN, but the V letter stands for vowel. So the ending is called vowel N ending. So when do we have to add this ending? When the stem of a word ends in one vowel, we add the vowel N ending. Here's one example. Talo means house. In the first step we have to find the stem, which is also talo. Then in the second step we have to double the last vowel of the stem. So that means we have talo plus o is talo. And then in the third step we add the letter n to it. So we have talo plus n is talon, which means to or into the house. Let's take another example. The word Suri, suri, which means large or big. Again, in the first step we have to find the stem, which is sura. Then in the second step we double the last vowel, so that means we have sura plus i is sura. Then in the third step we add the letter n and we have sura plus n is sura, which means to or into the big. Next example, avain, which means key. Again, the first step is to find a stem. Here it is, Aweime. In the second step, we double the last vowel. So that means we have Aweime plus I is Aweime. Then in the third step, we add the letter N and we have Aweime plus N is Aweime, which means to or into the key. Next one, Wasthaus means answer. Here the first step is again to find a stem, which is Vastauxe. In the second step we double the last vowel, so that means we have Vastauxe plus I is Vastauxe. And then the third step again we add the letter N and we have Vastauxe plus N is Vastauxe, which means to or into the answer. Next example, Sininan, which means blue. In the first step we have to find the stem, which is sinisa. Then in the second step we have to double the last vowel, sinisa plus i is sinisa. And then in the third step we add the letter n, so we have sinisa plus n is sinisa, which means to or into the blue. The next example is a bit more challenging, it's uzi, which means new. As always we have to find the first step the stem, which is ude. But since the illative requires the strong grade, we have to take the stem ude with the letter T instead of a D. And then we carry on as always. In the second step, we double the last vowel, which means we have ude plus E is 
Ute. And then in the third step, we add the letter N. So we have Ute plus N is Uten, which means to the new or into the new. One more example. When the stem of a word ends in two different vowels, we also have to add the vowel N ending. Here is one example. Kate, which means kitchen. Again, in the first step, we have to find the stem, which is K then in the second step we have to double the last vowel, which means K plus Ö is K And then in the third step we add the letter N. So we have K plus N is K which means into the kitchen. Alright, the second illative ending is the one where we add H, vowel N. Let's see when this ending is required. So, when we have a word that consists of one syllable and it ends in two same vowels, then we add the ending H vowel N. Let's take a look at one example. Ma means ground or land. In the first step, we add the letter H. So that means we have Ma plus H is Mach. Then in the second step we add the vowel to it. Here we need the vowel A, so that means we have Mach plus A is Maha. Then in the third step we add the letter N to it and we have Maha plus N is Mahan, which means into or to the land. Now let's take another example where we have again a word that consists of one syllable but it ends in two different vowels. Here's one example, dia, which means road or way. As before, in the first step we add the letter H, which means we have dia plus H is dia. Then in the second step we have to add the vowel to it. Now the question here is which vowel do we have to add because we have two different ones here. So we always take the last vowel of the two vowels which is actually here e. So that means we have die plus e is die. Then the third step we add the letter n to it and we have die plus n is die which means to the road or to the way. One more example. Let's see how it works with compound words where the second word is ending in two vowels. For example, Johansu. In the first step, we add the letter H to it. So that means we have Johansu plus H is Johansu. Then in the second step, we have to add the vowel U to it. So that means we have Johansu plus U is Johansuhu. And then in the last step we add N to it and we have Johansuhu plus N is Johansuhu, which means to Johansu. So what's important here? When we have a compound word, then we have to focus on the second word of the compound word when we want to add the illative ending. Alright, let's take a look at the third ending, which is the sen ending. Let's see when we have to use this one. So, when we have a stem consisting of two or three syllables ending in two same vowels, then we have to add the ending sen to it. Let's take a look at one example, huone, which means room. In the first step, we have to find the stem, which is huone with a double E. Then in our second step, we just have to add the ending sen to it. So that means we have huone plus sen is huone sen, which means into the room. Let's take another example, diera, which means science. In the first step again, we have to find the stem, which is Dieta. So here we see again the consonant gradation changing. Then in the second step we just add the ending sen to it and we have dieta plus sen is dieta sen, which means into the science. Next example, espo. As always in the first step we have to find the stem, which is actually also espo. Then in the second step we just have to add sen to it and we have espo plus sen is espo sen, which means to espo. Next example, vesenet, meaning tired. Here in the first step we have to find the stem, which is Vesune. Then in the second step we have to add sen to it and we get vesune sen, which means to the tired. Two more examples, 
Taiwas, which means sky. Here the first step is again to find the stem, which is Taiwa with a double A. Then in the second step we add San to it and we have Taiwa plus San is Taiwa San, which means into or to the sky. And the last example, Kaunis, which means beautiful. Here the stem is Kauni and in the second step we add San to it. That means we have Kauni San, which means into the beautiful. All right, now let's move on to our next chapter, how to form the illative with foreign words. So, when we have a foreign word ending in a consonant, we have to add the ending in to it. Let's take a look at one example. Lund, which is a city in southern Sweden. Here it's very easy to form the illative. We just have to add in to the word. So that means we have Lund plus in is Lundin, which means to Lund. Let's do another example. New York. Here we just have to add the ending in to the second word. So that means we have New York plus in is New York in, which means to New York. All right, now let's move on to our fifth chapter. Here we are going to have a look at some easy sentences. Aki mene duohon pienan kirjaston, which means Aki goes into that small library over there. So let's go through it. Aki mene means Aki goes. Mene is the third person singular of the verb menna, which means to go. Then we have duohon, which is the illative of the word duo, which means that. And it's used when we're talking about something that is further away, but we can still see it. Bienen is the illative of the word bieni, which means small. And kiriaston is the illative of kiriasto, which means library. So since the words duo and piani refer to the library, which is kiriasto, we also have to put them into the illative case. So let's repeat. Aki mena duohon pianan kiriaston. Aki goes into that small library over there. Next example. Astronauti Neil Armstrong lensi guhun means the astronaut Neil Armstrong flew to the moon. So what is interesting here, lensi is the third person singular past tense of the verb lenta, which means to fly. And guhun means to the moon, it's the illative case of the noun gu, which means moon. So let's repeat, astronauti Neil Armstrong lensi guhun. The astronaut Neil Armstrong flew to the moon. Next one. Talvella ajomme matkusta Lontoosen means in winter we plan to travel to London. Talvella means in winter. Ajomme means we intend. It's the first person plural of the word aikoa, which means to plan or to intend to. Matkusta means to travel and Lontoosen means to London. It's the relative case of Lonto, which means London. So let's repeat. Talvella ajomme matkusta Lontoosen. In winter we plan to travel to London. And one more example with a foreign word. Aki lechte viikonloppuna Lundin means Aki leaves on the weekend to Lund or Aki goes on the weekend to Lund. So what's interesting here, Lechte is the third person present tense of the verb Lechte, which means to leave and Vikonloppuna means on the weekend and Lundin is the illative of Lund. Let's repeat, Aki lechte Vikonloppuna Lundin. Aki leaves on the weekend to Lund. Now let's see how we can use the illative case in time expressions. So when we're talking about a time span in which a certain action didn't happen, then we're going to use the illative case. For example, En alle geunet Sveitsisse vorten means I haven't been to Switzerland for a year. So En alle geunet is the first person singular perfect negative of the verb 
Gouda. Then we have Sveitsissa, which is the innocive of Sveitsi. Here we need the innocive case because we have the Gouda verb ahead of it. And Vuoten is the illative of Vuosi, which means year. So let's repeat. En alle gaunet Sveitsissa Vuoten. I haven't been to Switzerland for a year. Next one, we also use the illative case when we want to express until what time. Here's one example. Olen lomala elokuuhun asti means I'm on vacation until August. Olen lomala means I'm on vacation. Elokuuhun is the illative case of the month eloku, which means August, and asti means until. So let's repeat. Olen lomala elokuuhun asti. I'm on vacation until August. Now, when we want to say from what time until what time, we also use the illative case. For example, Olen töissä maanantaista perjantaihin means I'm at work from Monday until Friday. Olen töissä means I'm at work. Maanantaista means from Monday. It's the illative case of the day maanantai, which means Monday. And perjantaihin means to Friday. It's the illative case of perjantai, which means Friday. So let's repeat. Olen töissä maanantaista perjantaihin. I'm at work from Monday till Friday. Now let's move on to our next chapter, the illative in other situations. When we want to express where to a movement does end, then we have to use the illative case. Here's one example. Panen kenget jalkaan means I put the shoes on. Panen is the first person singular present tense of the verb panna, which means to put or to set. Genget is the nominative plural of the noun genke, which means show. And then we have jalkan, which is the illative case of jalka, which means foot or leg. What's actually interesting here? In English, we would rather say I put the shoes on my feet. But in Finnish, you rather want to say I put the shoes on my foot. That's how it's said and this is the reason why we say jalkan. So let's repeat. Panan genget jalkan. I put the shoes on. Next example. We also use the illative case when nouns refer to other nouns that require the illative. Let's see what it means. Ostin liput konsertin means I bought tickets for the concert. So here we have the word liput. It's the nominative plural of the noun lipu, which means ticket. So here we have to think like that. I bought a ticket. What was the ticket for? The ticket was meant to see a concert. So the word concert refers to the word ticket. In the Finnish language, the word ticket, which is lipu, requires the other noun, which refers to it, to stand in the illative case. Which is why the concert, which is concerti in Finnish, has to stand in the illative case. So that is why we say Concertin. So let's repeat. Ostin liput concertin. I bought tickets for the concert. Or if you bought tickets for a match, like a sports event, then you would say Ostin liput otelun. So otelun here is the illative of the word otelu, which means match. Next one. We also use the illative case in combination with certain adjectives. For example, du dvainen means satisfied. For example, mina olen du dvainen kursin means I'm satisfied with the course. Mina olen, I am, du dvainen satisfied kursin with the course. So that means here, when we have the adjective du dvainen, which means satisfied, we usually also want to say what we are satisfied with. And when we're, for example, satisfied with a course, then the word course, which is kursi in Finnish, has to stand in the illative case. That's why we say, Mina olen du dvainen kursin. I'm satisfied with the course. Next one. We also have the structure verb plus nonalized verb in illative. Here's one example. Olen kulestunut matkustamisen means I'm tired of traveling. 
So, Olen gulästynyt is the first person perfect of gulästyä, which means to be tired of. And here we have to think like that, of what am I tired? I'm tired of traveling. So that means traveling, which is actually a non-analyzed verb. In Finnish it is matkustaminen, has to stand now in the illative case, which is why we say matkustamisen. So let's repeat. Olen gulästynyt matkustamisen. I'm tired of traveling. Next structure we have is verb plus third infinitive in illative. Here's one example. Aki ja Pekka menevät pelaamaan sulkapaloa means Aki and Pekka are going to play badminton. So the word here, pelaamaan, is the third infinitive illative. The third infinitive is pretty easily formed. We take the stem plus ma plus the illative ending, which means pelata, which means to play, it's the infinitive form, changes to pelaamaan. So let's repeat. Aki ja Pekka menevät pelaamaan sulkapaloa. Aki and Pekka are going to play badminton. All right, we move on to the next chapter, the illative and the verb reactions. First example, jäädä, which means to stay. Here is one example. Jään kotiin means I stay at home. Jään is the first person present tense of the verb jäädä, which means to stay. And kotiin is the illative here. Here you have to think a little bit different. In English we would rather say, where do I stay? I stay at home. Home. But in Finnish, you rather say, where to do I stay? I stay to home. That is why we say, jään kotiin. Next one, unohta means to forget. Mina unohtin laukun autoon means I forgot the bag in the car. Mina unohtin is the first person singular past tense of unohta, which means to forget. So it means here, I forgot past tense. Laukun is the genitive case of lauku, which means bag. What did I forget? I forgot the bag. That's why we say laukun. And then we have auton, which is the illative case of auto. Here we need the illative case because of the verb unohta, which means to forget. So here we have to again think different. In English, we would rather say, I forgot my bag in the car. But in Finnish, it is, I forgot my bag to the car. So let's repeat. Mina unohtin laukun autoon. I forgot the bag in the car. Next one. Mina jätin avaimet kotiin means I left the keys back at home. Mina jätin is the first person singular past tense of the verb jätä, which means to leave behind. Avaimet, nominative plural of avaimen. Because we're talking about specific keys and kotiin is again standing here in the illative case. Here we have to think like that. Where to did I leave something behind? In Finnish it is to home. Mina jätin avaimet kotiin. I left the keys back home. Next one. Seppo on ihastunut sinun means Seppo has fallen in love with you. So, on ihastunut is the third person perfect tense of ihastua, which means to fall in love with. And then we have sinun, which is the illative case of sina. So, when we have the verb ihastua, then we use the illative case. Let's repeat. Seppo on ihastunut sinun means Seppo has fallen in love with you. Next one. Mina olen tottunut pitkään ja pimään talven means I'm used to the long and dark winter. So olen tottunut is the first person perfect tense of tottua which means to be used to. Then we have pitkään and pimään. The basic forms are pitkä and pima, and they're both are standing in the illative case because they refer to the winter. So let's repeat. Mina olen tottunut pitkään ja pimään talven. I'm used to the long and dark winter. Next one, uskoa, to believe. Emma ja Lasse uskovat ikuisen rakkauteen means Emma and Lasse believe in everlasting love. So, 
Uskovat is the third person plural, present tense of the verb uskoa, which means to believe, and ikuisen, rakkauten are the illative forms of ikuinen and rakkaus. Here we need the illative case because of the verb uskoa. Let's repeat. Emma ja Lasse uskovat ikuisen rakkauten. Emma and Lasse believe in everlasting love. Next one, gata, which means to pour. Hen gata kahvia kupin means he or she is pouring coffee into the cup. So hen gata is the third person singular present tense of the verb gata, which means to pour. Kahvia is the partitive case of kahvi. Here we need the partitive case because we're talking about an indefinite amount of coffee and kupin is the relative case of kuppi, which means cup. So here we have to think like that. Where does he pour something in? He's pouring coffee into the cup. Next one. Aki ja Pekka rakensivat kesämökkiin Vaasaan. Means Aki and Pekka build a summer cottage in Vaasa. So rakensivat is the third person past tense of the verb rakenta, which means to build. Kesemökin is the genitive case of kesemökki, which means summer cottage. What do they build? They built a summer cottage, which is why we use the genitive case, or as you want to say, the accusative case here. And Vaasan is the illative of the city Vaasa. So let's repeat. Aki ja Pekka rakensivat kesemökin Vaasan. Aki and Becca built a summer cottage in Vasa. Next one, vastata, to answer. Miksi et vasta puhelimen? Means, why don't you answer the phone? Miksi means why? Et vasta is the second person present tense negative form of vastata, which means to answer. And puhelimen is the relative case of puhelin, which means phone. So, let's repeat. Miksi et vasta puhelimen? Why don't you answer the phone? Three more examples. Mina luotan sinun means I trust you. So, luotan is the first person singular present tense of the verb luota, which means to trust. And sinon here is the relative case of sina, which means you. So, what's important here? When we want to say, I trust somebody, then the person we trust has to stand in the illative case. Next example. En echte nöt bussin means, I didn't make it to the bus. So, en echte nöt is the first person past tense negative form of the verb echte, which means to make it, but more in the sense of to reach something in time. And because of this verb, bussi has to stand in the illative case. Let's repeat. En echte nöt bussin. I didn't make it to the bus. And the last verb, tutustua, which means to get acquainted with or getting to know someone. Mina tutustuin hänään Suomessa means I got to know him or her in Finland. Mina tutustuin means I got to know first person past tense of tutustua and hänään is a relative case of hän which means he or she and Suomessa is the innocent case of Suomi which means Finland and we use here the innocent case because we want to say where did I get to know him or her. So yeah, when we want to say who did I get acquainted with and we use the verb tutustua, then the person has to stand in the illative case. Let's repeat. Mina tutustuin hänään Suomessa. I got to know him or her in Finland. All right, now let's move on to our next chapter. Specific words. This is actually a very easy chapter. So, menen kotiin means I'm going home. Menen kotiin. I'm going home. So kotiin is here standing in the illative case. So when we want to say we're heading towards home, then we have to say kotiin. That is why we say menen kotiin. I'm going home. Next one, menen ulos. Menen ulos means I'm going out. So when we want to say I'm going towards the outside, then we have to use ulos. Menen ulos. I'm going out or I'm going to the outside. Next one, en mene 
gawas means I'm not going far. So when we want to say I'm heading towards the far away, then we use gawas here. So when we say en mene gawas, it means I'm not going far away. All right, next one. Tule sisan means come in. So when we want to express towards the inside, then we use sisan, which is why we say tule sisan, come in. All right, now let's move on to our last chapter for today, the exercises. So the task is Put these 14 words into the illative forms. For each word, we have five seconds. So let's go. The first one is kolo, which means school. Now form it into the illative case, which is... That's right, it's kolon. Next one, suomi, meaning Finland. Its illative form is... That's right, it's Suomen. Next one, Puhelin, telephone. The relative case is... That's right, Puhelinman. Next one, Gusimus, which means question. The relative case is... Fantastic, it's Gusimuksen. Next one, Norjalainen, Norwegian. The relative case is... Very nice, it's Norjalaisen. Next one, Vesi, water. The illative is... Mm -hmm. It's Vettan, very good. Next one, Italia, meaning Italy. The illative is... Yes, it's Italian. Next one, Gu, means moon or month. The illative case is... Very nice, it's Guhun. Next one, Duo means that over there. The relative is... Mm -hmm. Excellent, it's Duohon. Next one, Torstai, Thursday. The relative is... Very nice, Torstai hin. Next one, Gallis, expensive. The relative is... That's right. It's Gallisen. Next one, Kirja, meaning letter. The relative is... Perfect. It's Kirjesen. Next one, Lonto, meaning London. Nice, it's Lontosen. And our last one, Vieras, which means guest. The relative is... Yes, it's Vierasen. Perfect. So that's it for today. I think I'm going to stop the video here. I hope you like this video. And if you want to learn more Finnish, then please remember to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day and see you next time.